Now, let's resume our sessions. Now, we have Alexander Gounder, who runs LingMyWeb, a digital agency specializing WordPress development and inbound marketing in India. He has been fostering the local community for some time now by organizing WordCamp Mumbai since 2014, as well as the WordPress Mumbai Meetup Group. Now, I call upon Alexander Gounder to speak on the topic contributing to WordPress. The exciting session will cover the why, what, where the contribution of WordPress that powers over 43% of the internet and is the best love open, open source software today. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, I'm going to speak about contributing to WordPress. So I thought uh, when we talk about WordPress, sometimes what happens is we are very myopic about our situation. Uh, so we understand WordPress from our perspective, but it's like looking at a uh, blind man looking at an elephant. So everyone has different perspectives. So whenever, even when you talk about contributing to WordPress, what I thought is it, it would be a good idea to do an introduction to WordPress. Uh, tell you all my side of what WordPress is and then probably uh, start with how you can contribute, what you can contribute. So first of all, I wanted to introduce WordPress to you. All right. Uh, so WordPress was forked from a software called uh, Cafe Log uh, by my, Matt Millenweg and Mike Little. Mike Little was based out of the UK and Matt Millenweg uh, out of the US. So that itself shows how it, it has this history of contributing across the globe, across uh, seas. Uh, Matt Millenweg wanted to just do a simple thing like start websites on jazz music. So it had a very simple premise. It was not very complex. It was not some big uh, conquering the world kind of a goal, but something as simple as making jazz music websites. So uh, till date, it's being used for very simple, simple tasks also, very complex tasks as well. But the simple is always what uh, attracts people to WordPress. Uh, Today, uh, it's being used by 43% of the world's websites. Uh, it has a 63% uh, share market share in terms of uh, content management systems. And it's built by an awesome community of developers and other contributors like myself. <laughs> Self plug. Yeah. So that, that's what uh, makes WordPress what it is today. Uh, definitely, that is why we need to talk about this aspect of contributing to WordPress to continue building WordPress the way it is being built. Uh, so what is WordPress? Uh, one of the best definitions I found of WordPress is this. Uh, WordPress is a free and open source blogging tool and a content management system based on PHP, MySQL, which runs on a web hosting service. Sounds very complex, but if you break it down, it's as simple as free and open source. We say free as in free of charge. You can just download it without paying any money. But the more important part of that free and open source is this free of freedom. Uh, freedom to do anything with the software. It's open source. So you it doesn't judge you that, okay, you are so-and-so person or you work for this kind of a company or you work for my competitor, so I'm not going to let you use it. Uh, that kind of freedom is not, that kind of restriction is not there. That kind of freedom you get with WordPress. Anyone and everyone can use it. So no one's stopping you to use it and make it better. Uh, blogging tool, it's run to use a blog. Uh, content management system, it's a content management system. All this is all the technical parts we can like probably skip. PHP is the programming language. MySQL is the database. This probably would change also. We are moving to a stage where PHP is being replaced by JavaScript as well. So that would definitely in web hosting service because you need to host WordPress somewhere. So web hosting service, but this important aspect of this definition is this free and freedom part, which I wanted to talk about. So a lot of people also get confused with this aspect of WordPress. There is WordPress.com and there is WordPress.org. Uh, WordPress.com is a web hosting service. It has a hosted service for WordPress by one of the founders of WordPress, Matt Millenweg. It's run by a for-profit company called Automatic. Uh, they work on a freemium model where 5% tries to pay for the entire ecosystem. So uh, you pay a premium for additional services, but 
the whole ecosystem people can just start a blog in uh, in wordpress.org you actually get the software you can download it install it on your local host or any web hosting service and you get all the features of wordpress there is no restrictions as such you can use whatever themes or plugins uh, that you've used and it's run by the wordpress foundation so this is the description, wordpress.com run by Automatic, a for-profit company, uh, run by WordPress Foundation, a not-for-profit organization, driven by volunteers. So when we talk about open source and open source values, a lot of us are developers, we worked in ID companies, we don't understand ki what is open source. We understand open source license, hai, GPL hai. I'm sorry, I'm using a little Hindi terms, I'm come from Mumbai, so uh please uh ha aapko chalega inko nahi chalega <laughs> uh, fair enough uh, open source values so some of these uh, values one of the things which you need to learn about if you want to explore the world of open sources uh, there's this very interesting book called cathedral and the bazaar by eric s raymond uh, basically it compares open source to closed source there are four principles of this. So what I'm just trying to summarize what this book talks about. All right. There are four principles. One is that many with many eyes, all bugs are shallow. So a lot of people try to say, okay, too many cooks or you spoil the broth. But with but what he's trying to say is because there are so many eyes on a particular issue and they are looking at it from their own perspective, they are able to give bug fixes and all that. That's how open source really works because everyone is putting in their perspective and they have those use cases. So we have so many use cases for WordPress that we are able to fix bugs very fast. So every bug becomes shallow because of this release early. Like, we have a WordPress version coming out so soon, so quick, every, like, what, you have an update every month probably at times. So those those things, really early, release early, release often. Uh, scratching a personal itch. So if there is an issue that is bugging you, you can always make it, a, make an issue out of it, or go and report that issue, submit a patch for the issue. So if there is something that is bothering you, something that is hurting your cause, you can always take it up and get that resolved. So you need not wait for the company to resolve it or some uh, agency to come and fix it, but you can also take it up. Like I'm a core contributor to WordPress software. I'm not a WordPress coder. I'm not a PHP developer. I have no idea of uh, PHP coding, but I reported a bug that I found and I followed through. That is the reason why I'm a core contributor. All right, so you can you can add your own uh, uh, this elements to the WordPress software this way. Egoless participation, it's not uh, people but the project. Uh, so a lot of people would want to have uh, a lot of features on WordPress. So like uh, for this, I, one of the best examples I could give you is the Jetpack plugin. With WordPress.com, there is a lot of features like social media share buttons, uh, uh, or other features like a gallery or custom post types that could if the the contribution that automatic does to wordpress they could always have put that into the wordpress core software but it would make it bloated and it's not viable for the actual core software so what they've done is they've made a plugin out of it so it's not about what they want or this but the project itself so the wordpress software still says stays sacrosanct and they have added all these features using their plugin called jetpack so any egoless participation so you don't do your own uh, you don't come with your own agenda but think about the large project and how it's going to impact uh, others as well so that's what this book talks about uh, then there is the GPL license. All right. So one of the reasons why what people used to keep saying why uh, GPL license, why is not uh, WordPress using some other license like uh, what is that MIT license? Yeah. Why is not? Why are they not using that? Why GPL? So the core software that what I spoke on uh, in the introduction to WordPress, uh, Cafe Log. Cafe Log itself is built with a GPL license. That was the reason why they could fork it. They could make WordPress out of it. 
both Matt Millenweg and uh, Mike Little, they were able to do it because of that software. So that is at the core of it. So WordPress also got released under GPL version 2 or later. So you this uh, any derivatives of WordPress. So when you're contributing to WordPress, any derivatives of WordPress because of this reason, any derivatives of WordPress also need to be GPL. This is including your themes and plugins. Anything that you're going to distribute needs to be under the GPL license. Uh, so this applies to distributed software. So if you're doing some client work, you're making a website for the client, you're not distributing it. So don't get alarmed or don't think of it like that way. This is this applies to distributed software. So if you're, you're selling a theme or you're uh, selling a plugin, you you have to sell it as under the GPL license. You may uh, so a lot of people say that if there is GPL, they might use it somewhere else or they might not pay me. You can ask them to pay you for support. The recurring fees can be for support and things like that, support and updates. So those things you can make clear, like I'm here to talk to you later if you all are still struggling or trying to understand why GPL, why not GPL. Uh, I'm more than willing to talk to you about it. Let's move ahead because we have a paucity of time. Uh, so technically there can be mixed licenses for your WordPress software because the PHP and the WordPress parts are supposed to be GPL, your design, your CSS, your images, all that can be not GPL. But if you're going to be involved in the WordPress community, you're truly not like, it's not uh, adhering to the spirit of WordPress, the free part, the freedom part by using this technical loophole of keeping a mixed license. So if you're going to contribute to WordPress or be part as a, uh, come as a speaker to a word, word camp or get involved in a word camp or any other WordPress meetup, at that time, if you're using this loophole, uh, you're not really welcome because you're not doing it in the spirit of WordPress. All right, so this is a requirement that if you're distributing software, you need to make it 100% GPL. It can't be this loophole wala version. Fair enough? Yeah. So uh, another thing you'll need to know about is the WordPress trademark. So the WordPress foundation owns the trademark uh, and oversees the rights to the WordPress name. All right. Uh, they have a usage policy. If you go to wordpressfoundation.org, uh, you will find the trademark policy. So you can adhere to this also. So how you use the WordPress logo in your websites, all of these matter. So you all might want to read up in this. So if you're looking at contributing to WordPress, these are some important aspects. Hmm. Uh, so if you're, uh, you can use the WordPress logo on your website, but to s suggest that you're giving a service and not suggest that you are like the best person or those kind of things. So you need to understand this uh, requirement. Uh, also, one of the requirements is not using the WordPress name in a domain. So you may want to use WP instead of WordPress. WP is allowed, but WordPress in a domain name is not allowed. This, is, this applies to top level domains. All right. So this trademark policy is pretty clear. So you all can look up wordpressfoundation.org. One of the things which I have not con ca carried in my presentation about contributing to WordPress, if you go to wordpressfoundation.org, you can also support the community team and the WordPress Foundation efforts by donating over there in cash. All right, so they have recurring donation options, all those kind of things. So you can all contribute to the WordPress Foundation from the site as well. All right. So when you're contributing to WordPress, there are some questions you might want to ask. Uh, why contribute to WordPress? So like you might be thinking about these aspects. So I try to summarize all the different aspects of why someone would want to contribute to WordPress. Uh, giving back. One of the primary, everyone tells me we want to give back to WordPress. Uh, I am just trusting that you're honest when you talk to me. So I, I'll agree with you. Oh, yes, you, you want to give back. So one of the main reasons for anyone to contribute to WordPress is giving back. The other contribution, the reasons would be something like vanity. So if you contribute to the WordPress project in different ways, in different teams, you get a nice profile badge, which you can show off and tell people like I go ahead and tell people, see, I'm a con 
core contributor i have a badge for that so vanity uh another reason would be you could learn from the best so if you if you're uh, contributing to wordpress uh, community team meetups and all you're meeting all these kind of people who are passionate about wordpress you learn a lot uh with my involvement in the wordpress community i've learned how themes are being developed how themes could be developed something like uh which i learned in my first wordcamp in 2012 i started organizing in 2014 but my first wordcamp was in 2012 at mumbai out there i learned about this uh, starter theme called underscore s till date we are using underscore s one of my company's main staple is doing custom themes and underscore s is what powers it all right so you learn something very core and critical to your business i think we have evolved as a wordpress agency because of my involvement in the wordpress uh, community i've learned we've learned a lot uh, also when you submit a patch for a bug on uh, core it will be reviewed by some of the best developers in the wordpress community some of the best minds so they are going to give you inputs like that they are going to they are not going to diss you and say boss kya kar raha hai what are you doing yaar this is not done they will instead tell you how you can improve it uh, see one of the things in the wordpress community is everyone they we keep reminding ourselves we don't need to be a jerk all right so when you contributing to one of the golden rules for the community and the wordpress project is not being a jerk so no one's going to be a jerk they are instead going to give you positive feedback they are going to help you improve and if they are being a jerk come talk to me we can probably do something about it <laughs> all right uh then networking like aditya said you get to meet you get to network people business wise it's a lot of uh positive stuff uh like at wordcamp kerala i met someone uh at the wordcamp and one of my clients wanted to move away from me and they wanted to move to him he called me up personally saying that this is happening alex i said i know i have told them uh, that i won't be able to handle you all uh, further and it was a positive thing today or yesterday also he came to me like this is a god sent alex these guys are really awesome for our company but that is networking see so, uh, today they they benefit from project project reference i was able to tell my clients that sorry i can't do this further any further but you trust me these guys are good i wouldn't know a company in kerala would be able to sitting in mumbai but i was able to tell my clients that because of this networking project collaborations you can collaborate with different people start projects i know in the wordpress community also so many people have worked together and built uh, some awesome companies out of this self improvement you get to learn a lot of things like the previous session was about how to better do remote working how would we learn something like that so self improvement is always there demonstrable skills when you contribute to wordpress people know about you people know uh, okay this guy has done this so that is demonstrable skills good for your uh, uh, this also and then influence in industry know how so you get to influence the project that you're working on so by uh submitting patches by uh, contributing you are able to be part of that conversation you are able to drive that conversation where to contribute so the, this is the where part of uh, the contribution support forums uh the wordpress.org support forums lot of uh, new people to wordpress are asking questions they want to they seeking help this is the first place you could start contributing to wordpress start answering uh, people on the support forums then there is the make.wordpress.org make.wordpress.org is make wordpress is the hub for contributing to wordpress different aspects are there i'll talk about that in detail uh, going further so i'm still like only midway to my presentation if you were wondering uh, then there is the local community uh, meetups are there there is we have a facebook group called jwp on facebook where we talk about all our events and everything that's happening on wordpress there is a wordpress india slack which i also don't use uh, people have been telling me you're not replying to us but uh, yeah there are a lot of people on that uh, slack group also so you all can join those yeah so some of the tools that you might need is first basic understanding of wordpress you need a wordpress.org profile 
you uh, you can join the make wordpress slack group as well so there is wordpress.slack.com as well uh, and on make make.wordpress.org every project that you go to there is a handbook there are team chats so they give you a schedule of when that team is meeting or when they are chatting on the wordpress slack so you can look up the handbook to understand what they are doing what are the policies how you go about doing this how bugs are submitted whatever the process is they'll have a handbook for it so you can look through handbooks and learn the team chats are where whatever is happening they'll be discussing that live on on slack so you can go and attend those team chats get involved there and there is a whole news and update so every team has that blog which is going on where they are talking and discussing about the latest happening so you can start reading and figuring out what's happening so these are the aspects so these are the tools you would need to this no macbook no phone nothing this is all you need you would need a computer obviously but uh, yeah i'm saying you don't need something extra this is all you need hmm? Uh, while we come to the topic of contributing to WordPress, one of the things I can't leave out is this uh, thing we call Five for the Future. All right. Uh, back in 2014 at WordCamp Europe, uh, Matt Millenweg was asked about how companies can make WordPress better. Uh, so the gist of that whole discussion or the answer to that question was this uh, proposal called Five for the Future. If companies would give only 5% of their employees or the time of their employees to making WordPress better or contributing to WordPress projects. At that point of time, the WordPress uh, software would be in a very sustainable and in a good space. We would have enough volunteers, supporters for WordPress. So it's very important. Uh, we have a page called Five for Future on the WordPress.org uh, website itself. Companies can come and register. They can add their employees. So the time that their employees are contributing, that also shows up on that company's profile. Or individuals also can add the time that they're going to contribute to which projects they're going to co contribute there. So it looks, it, it adds to that vanity part of WordPress also. So definitely look up five for the future. Uh, Matt Millenweg has written a very good blog post in uh, 2014 about this. So if you search five for the future WordPress, you would find a, a lot of resources on this. So get involved. So where do you get involved? So you first start by picking a team. So there are various four aspects which we try to divide this contribution part to into. This will allow you to navigate yourself. All right. Uh, the building part. There is core design, accessibility, meta, mobile, test, which is part of the core. Then there is the part which is extending WordPress. There is the operations part and the supporting part. So we'll start. Now I start. All right. So the building part. So there is core WordPress. The core WordPress, all the bugs are and all are tracked on this uh, thing called SVN. All right, so there is track.wordpress where you see all the bugs and you can this. Uh, you can patch a bug or you can test a bug as well. So there are uh, bugs which are available for testing. So if you're a, a UA your quality uh, tester or something like that, you can probably test a bug as well. Uh, there is something called good first bugs. So if you're just getting started, you should look up for good first bugs. Uh, and probably those are like the easy ones. So you can just start off there. So a lot of these core, uh, so what I told you about ego list participation. So the main guys, they are just marking the easy stuff as good first bugs for you all to come in and get started rather than trying to solve it and make a record for themselves saying like I've resolved so many bugs. All right. So they've left those for you. So you can start there. And uh, whenever there is a release cycle, there is a bug scrub happening. So there are bugs marked for those uh, bug scrubs. So those you can look at. Also, you can report a bug if you found one. Definitely. So this is what you can do in core. There is a design team which looks at the design of the WordPress software. So this is where you can get involved, the UI, the interface, the visual design. There is an accessibility team which is uh, making sure that the WordPress software uh, can reach every kind of user. 
all right there is the meta team so the wordpress.org website itself the wordcamp websites the tools that we have on the wordcamp websites like the attendee list the this all those things also need some help and support so there are a lot of bugs which are there in that also that need to be resolved yeah uh, so the wordcamp sites the tools the wordpress forums all of those also need some back end help and support so those will be managed from here uh, there is mobile we have a mobile app for wordpress the mobile team looks at that there is testing the testing team just tests everything so if you're passionate about user testing and all those kind of things you can get involved here then we come to the second aspect that is the operations so there is an a marketing team for wordpress who talks about how to market the wordpress software they talk, they create uh, manuals guides they create these very cool uh, tools which we can, we can use as a community or as a software to promote wordpress so if you are a marketing person and you don't really have any coding skills don't worry this is where you can get involved uh, there is a hosting team also so this looks at issues faced by actually hosting a website has hosting a wordpress website uh, one of my friends uh, sayog from madpopo he's involved in this team as well so if you are a hosting company you can help this team figure out how uh, best uh, a wordpress can run on your hosting environments or what uh, you can learn from them how your hosting environment should be so this hosting team is for that then there is extending wordpress this is one of the coolest parts of wordpress uh, then first we start with themes so if you build a theme you can upload it to wordpress.org uh, you can help review themes which are being submitted uh, this would also sharpen your theme development skills so you would understand what are the requirements for submitting a wordpress theme or make your wordpress theme better then there are plugins you can build plugins if you're a plugin developer you should uh, subscribe to the plugin review team whatever they are doing those kind of things and also see this review team acts as a great uh, gatekeeper so uh, so so that nothing out of the world, this is uh, submitted but they always need help they need help reviewing plugins all of those so at that point of time if you're a plugin developer you can look at these also so with every fresh version of the wordpress uh, software the plugins also need to be updated and made sure that they don't break anything so those kind of things uh, will come in the pers uh, purview of the plugins team polyglots like your wordcamp kerala is one of the biggest communities for translation out here in india so polyglots is where you translate wordpress there is a lot of opportunity in making sure that the wordpress software is available in regional languages in our languages uh, so polyglots is where you can go and submit uh, translations to the wordpress software tide tide is this uh, project uh, which was uh, is a newer project in terms of uh, testing and automated testing throughout the wordpress uh, ecosystem so this does a lot of testing of uh, plugins and also if you are interested in automated testing tide is a team uh, which would do that wp cli this also is a very good command line tool for the wordpress project and now is part of the core make.wordpress.org also so there's wpcli openverse is a new team as well this uh, is a search engine which we are trying to integrate into the wordpress uh, ecosystem where you can search for open media like images and all part of that is this photos directory where we if you are a good photographer you have some stock image you can submit it as free uh, what is that uh creative common zero cc zero all right so you can submit it to the photo directory there is the support team uh the community team where we have meetups and this then there is documentation see with wordpress if you see in the back end also if you click on uh, there is a documentation page on every back end page so there is good documentation available for every aspect of wordpress we never look at it but a lot of people are looking at it so if you are a content writer you can help improve all this documentation for us then there is a training team 
who create resources for training in WordPress, like which can also be translated. So if you're looking at uh, doing some training in your local languages, probably you can help translate these resources as well. So there is a training team uh, which is creating content for training in WordPress. There is a support team, again, the WordPress forums. Uh, you, a lot of new people in the WordPress ecosystems, they don't have the colleagues or the uh, friends to ask questions. They go on the WordPress support forum. So a lot of new people in the WordPress ecosystem. See, we tend to become very myopic. We, are, we think that we are the end of it all, but probably we are only like a 1% and the rest 99% are probably still going to the WordPress forums for getting their answers. So this is a very good place to help the WordPress project. There is WordPress.tv, sessions like this are recorded and put up on WordPress.tv. Not every WordCamp has editors or uh, help in terms of editing those videos. You can help edit those videos, review them, upload them on WordPress TV. This way we create a good resource for educating people on WordPress core performance again this is a new team which is looking at performance we had a session uh, in the track one for performance and core performance is a new team which is helping improve the performance of the wordpress software speeding it up uh, so this is something that has come up new a quick recap you can get involved there is there are four aspects building core building which involves core design accessibility meta mobile and test Extend, uh, then we have operations, marketing and hosting. Then extending, we have themes, plugins, polyglots, tied, WP, CLI, OpenWorse and photos. Supporting, which has the community team, documentation team, training team, support, TV and core performance. So, and the tools that you would need is some basic understanding of the WordPress software. You need a WordPress.org profile. You need to join make dot uh, wordpress dot slack dot com and these are some of the tools that you'll find on make dot wordpress dot org also which are handbooks team chats and news and updates so thank you that is it i'm alexander gounder i run ink my web and i'm from the wordpress mumbai community i don't think we have time for questions but I would love to chat. So if you all come to me personally, we can talk about a lot of things. All right.